welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed, and today we're going to be continuing with our Imperial Guard Regiment videos with a look at the Armageddon Steel Legion. Now, the Armageddon Steel Legion is one of the Imperial Guard Regiments which is native to the Hive World of Armageddon, which is the site of some of the largest wars in the Imperium within the last 1,000 years, and I will elaborate on these wars shortly. Now, the military of Armageddon operates a large standing army because of the number of conflicts that have recently arisen on this planet, including both a planetary defence force known as the Armageddon Defence Force and the famed Armageddon Steel Legion, which we will be talking about in more detail later on in this video, which specialise in mechanised warfare and fighting the Orc Menace. Now, as I mentioned, Armageddon's recent history is littered with vicious wars that are known across the Imperium, although when you call your world Armageddon, it's unlikely that you're going to lead a peaceful lifestyle. Now, the first war for Armageddon is perhaps the least known, and probably for good reason. For in the year 444 of Millennium 41, there was a cultist uprising which led to an invasion by Angron, the demon prince and former Primarch, and his World Eaters Traitor Legion. Now, a combined force of Space Wolves and Imperial Guard were able to combat the Traitor Legion and hold on until a Grey Knight Strike Force came in and eventually defeated the demon prince, sending him and his legion back into the warp. Now, unfortunately, after this conflict, there was a clashing of ideologies between the Space Wolves and the Grey Knights, which came to a head through the Grey Knights' policies of no witnesses to their actions, which almost ended in an exterminatus being called on the Space Wolves' homeworld of Fenris, although this, of course, was prevented from happening through some hasty negotiations on both sides. Now, the Second War for Armageddon is more well known, and features a huge invasion by the Orcs in the year 941 of Millennium 41. It was led, of course, course by the mighty war boss, Gazgul Mag Uruk Tharaka. Now in the beginning, the original planet's forces were on the verge of absolute defeat due to incompetent leadership, until the relief forces arrived, commanded by Lord Commander Dante, who was the chapter master of the Blood Angels, who led a combined force of Salamanders, Blood Angels, Ultramarines, Imperial Guard, and Squats, although they may have been erased from the Imperial histories. Now, eventually they did defeat the Orcs and push them off the world, although this was not the last that you would hear of Gazgul. It was also in this war where the famous Commissar Yarrick came to prominence, although we will speak more on him in his individual video later on. Now, the Third War for Armageddon is the most recent, occurring 50 years after the Second War, and most recently in the Imperial timeline to date. Now, Gazgul returned, leading a second war onto the planet of Armageddon. Commissar Yarrick and many of the heroes who fought in the original conflict were called again into combat to defeat this returned foe. Now, officially, the Third War for Armageddon ended with a narrow Imperial victory, however, there is still a lot of conflict on this planet, with more Orcs and Imperial troops arriving all the time to continue in the struggle to dominate this planet. Now, the primary force that we are focusing on today is, of course, the Steel Legion, the primary Imperial Guard Regiment levied from this world. Now, the Steel Legion operates mainly on the planet of Armageddon itself due to the high number of Orc raids attacking the world, although it does extend its reach to other planets within its surrounding systems, and sometimes to other worlds of the Imperium, although, of course, due to the high amount of fighting on their planet, it's much more likely that they'll be fielded on Armageddon than anywhere else. Now, their regimental structure is composed of 12 companies, each with a mix of infantry, armour, artillery, and mechanised infantry in chimeras. Now, a full-strength company would have around 175 soldiers, although casualties are suffered during battle and will quickly reduce this number. Now, the recruitment and training of the Armageddon Steel Legion is quite standard. They will either conscript or uh, seek volunteers from anyone of recruiting age and train them up in the standard manner of the Imperial Guard. However, the focus of the Steel Legion is particularly in the arts of deploying mechanised infantry. In addition, they also specialise in fighting in urban and hive city environments, as their planet is a hive world. They are also well versed in fighting in heavy industrial zones, chemical sumps, and other such toxic regions which are common on their homeworld. Now, their equipment and experience with such toxic environments make them invaluable for fighting in all sorts of polluted and otherwise noxious war zones, and particularly those that are heavily urbanised with this sort of terrain, where many other guard regiments would not be able to operate themselves. Now, the battle style of the Steel Legion is mainly that of a mechanised infantry, and Armageddon actually produces many armoured fighting vehicles for the Imperium, including the Chimera APC. Now, this allows them to launch rapid attacks against enemy forces, spearheaded by Chimeras, which then disgorge infantry right into the heart of the enemy and disrupt their battle line, usually used in breaking sieges or trench warfare lines. 
Now, finally, the equipment of the Steel Legion is that of a uniform mustard yellow trench coat with heavy boots, gloves, and gas masks, with rounded bowl helmets over black fatigues. Now, as noted, their uniform is actually similar to that of the Death Corps of Krieg, although the colours and the type of gas mask worn are actually a little different. Now, the reason for that is, of course, because both planets have highly toxic atmospheres. It becomes likely that both would use very similar pieces of kit, as both are quite widely available in the Imperium and are very useful when fighting in toxic environments. Now, finally, the weapons that are favoured by the Armageddon Steel Legion are that of grenade launchers and missile launchers, some of the more basic projectiles that are actually quite useful against orcs, one of their primary enemies. Now, that's everything I have to say on the Armageddon Steel Legion. It's quite a quick video today, and that's mainly because, although the Steel Legion are quite famous, they are not actually that different from many other Imperial Guard regiments, and so, and so you can see most of their organisation and combat doctrine is similar to that of the Cadians or any other Imperial Guard regiment who fight using standard methods. So that's everything we have to say on the Steel Legion today. We will have another overview video of a different race coming soon, so please do put your choices in the comment section below, or you can go to the Vox Relay, the Vaults of Terror forums, which are linked in the description below where you can ask any questions, vote for the next thing you want to see on the Vaults of Terror, or just ask a question of the small but rather well-informed community that seems to live there. Now if you have a question for myself you can send us a personal message or you can ask a question on the Vox Relay and I'll be happy to try and answer it in the most detail possible. So that's everything I have to say today, see you next time on the Vaults of Terror.